Next is number 101 on your list. This is Cotone Aster Lacteus, the Parney Cotone Aster. I'm sure it's probably pretty challenging to see this plant behind me, but I wanted to show you this one because it does get quite large and um, <clears throat> there actually is, is a fair amount of damage on this plant. Probably a combination of the fact that we got to zero degrees Fahrenheit on campus here. And also I think there was, um, a, there, there appears to be a fair amount of this damage is from fire blight. So um, I, I don't think this is a uh, resistant uh, species or at least this genotype is not. So Cotoneaster uh, lacteus, it does have um, alternately arranged leaves. They're fairly large. I just refer you to uh, the slides on this one as far as the, the, the specific leaf morphology. But this one does produce prolific numbers of fruit. You can uh, imagine a tree uh, or large shrub, small tree, this size, uh, the amount of fruit that it could possibly produce. And uh, even if you have moderate um, uh, seed germination, it can be a real problem. So the birds eat this fruit and they disperse it. And, and Parni cotoneaster is one that has become an issue as far as invading and, and um, naturalizing in uh, some areas of southern uh, coastal Oregon down into California. So uh, uh, I would say use uh, Cotoneaster lacteus with caution. Uh, it can get too large for landscapes and it can produce uh, copious amounts of seed that can uh, be distributed. So that is uh, Cotoneaster lacteus.